Uh, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the Red Shadow, and I'm back for my monthly pickups video. A uh, little bit of a smaller pile than last month, but I still have some stuff in here that I'm pretty excited about. And uh, and also November is fixing to be pretty pretty big with a few of the things that I've picked up recently or that are going to be arriving soon. So. I know it's the beginning of this month's pickup video, and I'm already talking about next month's, but uh, yeah, I'm just, just excited that I've got some stuff that's pretty fun. Uh, sure doesn't feel like PS4 releases are slowing down all that much um, from all the limited print companies and even still retail stuff. I'm kind of hoping that it'll start to get there as we roll into next, next year, because uh, I'd really like to, one, slow down... And, and like start to just dig out the things for PS4 that I wanted that I missed or didn't know about. And uh, I'd like to save up and get a PS5 and start on what'll just be a really minimal overall collection for that console. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I got two Blu-rays and then the rest is going to be games. So the first thing I want to show off here is a movie called Kill Shot. Now this is a movie I just kind of stumbled upon last year um, because it was being filmed at least partially in Montana where I used to live, uh, someplace I kind of hope to, to get back to at some point. Um, but I don't know, anytime I see something that has that's, that says Montana, either it's set there or it was filmed there, uh, I get interested in it. and. I don't know how well you'll be able to see in the screenshots. Nothing here specifically, but you can see the forest and the woods depicted in some of these uh, pictures on the back of this. Now, as far as I know, the, the movie is not super great. The ratings on it are not great. But, I, I, like I said, I stumbled across somebody talking about how, I think it was the dude here on the front, about how he was filming a movie in Montana, and uh, that just immediately kind of got my attention so when the movie finally came out I managed to pick it up uh, a couple weeks after it came out but last month so we'll see if that's any good when I do finally sit down to watch it now uh, continuing my X-Files journey I managed to pick up one more season meaning I have one season left to grab on Blu-ray that's the problematic season 8 where apparently some of the early versions of it had uh, a problem with with it just being too dark uh, but this is season nine the last season of the original run of the series um, so happy to have this of course like I said I X-Files is my favorite show uh, and having it all on blu-ray is going to sort of renew the experience of watching the whole show not that I need anything extra to enhance that but then again HD for the X-Files that should be pretty awesome when I get to watch those I don't know when I'm gonna jump into season 8 because I know I'm gonna have to try to ask eBay sellers to I don't know like verify that the copy that they have is is not uh, one of the uh, defective copies so I'll have to buy a, a used copy of season eight not that I care about that but right now until some things in my life settle out a little bit it just feels like extra bit of stress that I don't want to have to deal with at the moment so we'll wait but hopefully it's it's only the start of November so two months left in the year I'm pretty pretty positive I'll have the last season before 2023 is over all right, now let's jump into the games, and we'll start off with two games that I picked up from Best Buy that were on clearance. I don't know how many of the games are available now. Several games were already sold out, but I just happened to go to Best Buy in search of some other game. And, you know, for me anyway, my experience on Best Buy and a lot of those websites is... You know, if you've shopped on there for video games, then you're going to get a bunch of recommended games at the bottom of the page. Hey, here's some other deals you may like. And I noticed that there were a whole bunch of games that were like $5, $7, $10. They were on clearance, so I presume Best Buy was trying to clear out some old stock. I missed a bunch of really good deals that I would have liked to have 
pulled the trigger on. But I got these two games for super cheap. I think it was $17 for the two of these. Um, this first one isn't necessarily a game I would have bought normally, but at the price I thought, why not? Uh, it would be something I'd mess around with for a little while anyway. And anyway, this is Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, and this is the Ultimate Edition. Um, I'm not even 100% sure what makes it Ultimate over a normal one. Probably just additional costumes, characters, levels, or whatever. But this is a, essentially a, a Smash Brothers clone, I guess. Uh, I remember people being pretty excited about this when it came out. And there's a All-Star Brawl 2 in the works. Um, so it's just a bunch of Nickelodeon characters from over the years. Because I see Ren and Stimpy on here, as well as Spongebob, uh, the Ninja Turtles, Avatar, The Last Airbender, and some character models that I recognize but I don't know the shows. So, for a cheap price, under $10, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll put that on my shelf. And then the second game that I got is actually way more interesting to me uh, as a game that I would actually play. Uh, this game is called Ember, and it's basically a firefighting simulation game, except it's not a simulator. It's The, the art style is very cartoonish, and, and the game the gameplay seemed arcade-like when, like, say, the Firefighter Simulator game I showed last month uh, was more of a simulation game, trying to be more realistic. This is more fast-paced and, you know, probably geared towards kids. Uh, I thought it looked kind of fun once I watched some gameplay in action, and I think this one was one of the $5 games that I got. So, yeah, I, w I wasn't going to pass that one up. And I've got, I guess, my only limited run game for the month. This is a game here called Heart of the Woods. This is a visual novel game um, with pretty uh, decent uh, artistic style. I, I had to look it up so I could understand a little bit more about the game. Uh, it's what's called a Yuri Romance visual novel. Yuri Romance video games, I guess, usually have to do with uh, multiple female characters in intimate relationships. Not, not like lurid and, and, you know, sexual or anything, uh, but just romantic or, or platonic friendships. Um, visual novel games are, are a genre of games that I haven't played a lot of, but I've bought quite a few because I think that there's a place for just kind of watching an animated story told in a video game where every once in a while you're just going to press a button to prompt some uh, dialogue. Or in the case of a game like Doki Doki Literature Club, you do make decisions in it. But it's pretty passive experience. Uh, but I think that that can be fun. And, uh, and this one was one of those where I looked at it enough and I thought, sure, I'll check it out. It's kind of a ghost story or paranormal investigation story as well. And then speaking of visual novels, uh, this is Vampire the Masquerade, the New York Bundle. Um, I'm a person who has played very little of Vampire the Masquerade, Masquerade Bloodlines, the original vampire game that, uh, Vampire the Masquerade game that popped up in 2003 or four, and has a big cult following. Um, I Like I said, I've played a little bit of it on my own, but uh, mostly I, I watched a few Let's Players, you know, like eight, nine, ten years ago, play it, became fascinated with that game, have always wanted to play and complete it for myself, and then when the uh, announcement a couple years back that there was a sequel coming out, Bloodlines 2, which has been mired in development hell for the last couple of years. Sounds like it's getting back on track, but when uh, when that popped up, I thought, that's cool, I want to play that. And then I started to notice they were doing more games under the Vampire the Masquerade banner. Uh, and this is a pair of visual novel games from Vampire the Masquerade. Um, and they're... 
Shadows of New York and Coteries of New York. So when this one dropped, I said, I, I need to get that. There was a, I don't, I think it was a, two months ago or sometime in the last three or four months, I showed a game called Swan Song that was more of a, an RPG game like the original Bloodlines. And, uh, and any, any of these that are coming to physical that are visual novels, RPGs, uh, anything that's not, like there's a Battle Royale game I don't care about, there's a VR game that I can't care about because I don't have VR, but anything else that's coming out like this, and I'm also trying to get into the werewolf games uh, because it's kind of like a shared tabletop RPG uh, uh, franchise or whatever, uh, I'm going to be grabbing some of those too, uh, just so I can have a chance to get into this series and... Uh, learn about it and see if they're for me. I also was uh, told that there was a TV series from like the 90s that was based in it. I think it's I think it's in the Werewolf series or maybe it's in the Vampire series, but I'm watching some copies of that on eBay. So I might grab that at some point too. All right, down to the last 3 games that I have to show. So this is going to be a controversial one, I suppose, if you, if you pay attention to gaming discourse these days. But Red Dead Redemption, the straight-up port, apparently not a remaster, really, um, just a port to PS4 and Switch. I had to get it for PS4. Um, I love the original Red Dead. It doesn't come close to Red Dead 2, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the the original game is a classic, and I own it on the Xbox 360, and my 3 360 is hooked up, and I could play it at any time. But I'm really into having stuff like this on PS4, so I had to grab this. It was fifty dollars. People were complaining that a, such a low effort port like this shouldn't cost so much. I mean, it's not like it was seventy dollars. Um, it's not like it was the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy uh, remakes that was farmed out to a studio that probably shouldn't have been you know, handling a port like that. I still haven't attempted to play any of those games um, because I'm just kind of afraid that they're going to be uh, a bit of a, you know, that they're going to leave a bad taste in my mouth. On, on an experience where I want to play those original games a little bit more enhanced and modernized. This, to me, is not a game that necessarily needed to be remade. So for them to even just port it or do a remaster and kind of clean it up a little bit was fine. Price point didn't, didn't uh, bother me uh, because it wasn't a full $70, which is pretty much where games are selling at nowadays, even on PS4 new releases. Uh, so I guess you could call me part of the problem, but... This is something I will play and I will enjoy, so I don't see what, what kind of a problem it is to enjoy that. One person uh, buying a game like that out of hundreds of thousands or millions of people, it's not going to make a big difference. Uh, I've, just, I've discovered here recently that I'm kind of... When it comes to issues in the gaming industry, when it comes to vote with your wallet and all that kind of stuff. I'd love to be able to stand up and say, I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that. But everybody else is still doing it. If, if it's just a matter of buying a game and putting it on my shelf, popping it into my system and playing it, I get to determine you know, what is too much and what crosses a line. And to me, Red Dead does not cross a line like that. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. Uh... This was a game that I was shocked when I first saw it. It's been a while now since I discovered that this was a, a physical game available for the PS4. Uh, but I've talked about on my channel here about how much I love a game called Riven, the sequel to Myst. And Myst is fine, but Riven was a formative game for me in the 90s when it came to PC games and gaming in general. Point and click FMV adventure games from the 90s. Riven is is up there with the X-Files game and Phantasmagoria, Puzzle of Flesh. 
Um, I knew that Cyan had done another game more recently, but when it's... I, I associate those games with PC, which means it'll be a digital thing on Steam. I'll get it whenever, yada, yada, yada. But when I found out that they put their newest game, Abduction, on PS4, and that there was a physical, but it was Japanese only, I thought, well... I want to get it as long as I know I can play the game in English and it'll be fine, but I'm going to wait. And I watched this on eBay for the longest time before I finally just decided recently it was time to pick one up. Under $40, ordered it from someone who uh, was a seller out of Japan. It got to me in less than a week. I was like blown away because their, their uh, eBay shop was plastered with this, you know, I'm selling from Japan. It takes time to get these orders uh, to wherever you are in the world. So I was expected to. My my initial ship date was November fifteenth. I'm I'm sitting here doing this on the early morning of November fourth. So I wasn't supposed to get this for almost another two weeks, but I've had it for like a week or more. But anyway, this is abduction. Um, as far as the case is concerned, abduction from the makers of Mist is in English. Everything else on this is in Japanese. The spine, most of the stuff on the back, aside from stuff like Sunsoft and Cyan. Uh, but the game plays in English. Now, when I popped it into my system, my PS4 is connected to the Internet. So, of course, it, it started to install the game. And then it installed... A, I thought it was installing a regular patch. Maybe it did install a regular patch. But then at one point I looked and it said installing language patch. My guess is that if I didn't have internet and I threw this in, it might only be in Japanese off the disk. But it downloaded the language patch. The game, the audio, and, and uh, text on the screen is all in English. So I've only played like 20, 30 minutes just to sample it. I will be going back to it to see uh, you know, what the game itself is all about. Now, I was expecting a bit more of a point-and-click like the Mist series, but this is more like a walking simulator type, which, once I thought about it, games like Mist and Riven and all them, that's what they kind of evolved into, were games like Dear Esther, Gone Home, uh, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, um, what Remains of Edith Finch, etc., etc. That's kind of what point-and-click games from the 90s, both the, uh, like, Monkey Island and Broken Sword-style games, but also the, the FMV games that I love so much, that's essentially what they evolved into over the years. Or the walking simulators, where you're sort of walking through an environment and clicking on things and solving puzzles and picking things up and... Um, so it makes sense that Abduction is in that format. Uh, I, I'm intrigued to see what the game is all about, despite some poor reviews that I looked up. Okay, and then the last thing to show is a game that I, I'm pretty sure when I pre-ordered this, it was supposed to have come out a couple months ago. <clears throat> and every time I checked... Uh, like every couple of weeks I'd go back and I'd look and I'd say, I swear that date was September and now it's October. And Anyway, it doesn't matter one way or another as long as something does show up. I just I felt like this was something I was going to have in the summertime. But this is Coffee Talk Episode 2, uh, Hibiscus and Butterfly. Now I feel bad that I have not played the first Coffee Talk yet so that I could speak a little bit more to the game series in general. Um, but when that, that first game came out, this is another visual novel style game. Uh, I had no idea that they were going to do more uh, for this series. So, as I said, this is a visual novel. Basically, you work in a coffee shop. You're the barista or whatever. I don't claim to know all the terminology when it comes to coffee shop stuff. Uh, but you live in a world where humans and like mythical races like uh, elves and dwarves and orcs and all that are all living side by side with humans. I find that 
kind of fascinating because of being a fan of Shadowrun, where in in the same uh, tabletop RPG style game, you have a cyberpunk world mixed with fantasy world. You have orcs and elves and magic mixed in with sci-fi and futuristic elements in the, in the cyberpunk genre. So this appealed to me because of that dipping into and mixing the two together in a non-traditional way. It's not a fantasy game. It's a modern day world. It's just that orcs and elves and dwarves all live amongst with humans and other races. And in, in, in the game, you just you talk to these people and you make coffee and uh, and it's just it, like it even says on the back of this chill lo-fi atmosphere I just expect it to be one of those chill games that will be fun to play in between playing you know a new horizon game or a new big JRPG um, and that's the kind of stuff that I, I love to have in my collection a good balance of the big epic blockbuster games the small chill little indie games etc cetera, etc cetera. And also, I was pleasantly surprised, by the way, I, I pre-ordered it from Video Games Plus in Canada, I meant to mention that, uh, and it doesn't really have anything to do with them, I suppose, but it was just super cool that this came in in a box. It's just one of the plain, soft cardboard boxes. I don't know what else is included on inside of the box. There's nothing on the outside of the box that says also comes with stickers or postcards or anything like that, but... Uh, I don't know. It was just kind of cool. And and to be honest, uh, the weight of this almost suggests that there isn't a plastic case inside of it. Maybe it literally is just all inside of a box and it's an environmental thing to cut down on plastic. Um, but yeah, like I said, just pleasantly surprised by the packaging on this one. And that's my pickups for October 2023. So uh, thanks for watching. Like I said, next month I expect will be pretty cool. Uh, I've already received a game today that I was highly looking forward to, so that'll be nice to show next month. I've got a handful of other games on the way and uh, a new book from Bitmap Books, which I showed their JRPG book. I, I don't remember when it, I received that. I paid for it last November. I think it was earlier this year, or maybe it was December, November, December last year. Because they actually, <clears throat> they're pretty quick when they ship books when they have them in stock. Anyway, I have a new one coming from them that was uh, seasonally appropriate for last month, so there's a hint. All right, well, anyway, I'll shut up now. We'll see you in the next video.